Hey guys, so this is actually my part two video. If you haven't seen part one, you can go ahead and click the link over there. So I've grouped my ideas into 10 things that you need to watch out for when you're first starting violin. So number one, you find that the violin is perfect, but it's missing a string or the strings are dead and they need to be changed. Do not do this yourself for the first time. <laughs> Always, always, always just find somebody who has experience to do it for you. Um, and then once you do get to, around to doing the, changing the strings, do it one at a time. If you take them all off, all at once, the sound post that I talked about in part one that's inside the instrument, it will collapse. And then when that happens, um, then you won't be able to make any sound at all. Uh, the people that I've, I know that have done this usually are actually guitarists. Uh, that's because with a guitar you don't have to worry about that. For, but for a violin it's very important for that pressure with the strings to be constant. Number two, if it is a young child who is learning, don't buy their instrument. Um, there's really no point. Uh, if you have a local store nearby, rent it. If you don't, then yeah, go ahead and buy your instrument, but if there's a place nearby that's renting, you might as well rent because your child is just going to grow and is going to need a bigger violin down the road anyways. Number three, if you're getting a violin outfit, usually the rosin that comes with it isn't any good. Luckily, rosin is fairly inexpensive, so you can uh, buy different ones, try them out, see what works best for you. In general, um, if you're living in a humid, warm climate, you'll want a lighter colored rosin. If you're in a cool, uh, dry climate, you usually want a darker rosin. It has to do with um, how the rosin is affected by your climate and how sticky it is and whatnot. Number four, if you're a beginner or it's your child who's a beginner, at first, don't touch these. Uh, the tuning pegs, they're very finicky and they're kind of hard to work with until you get used to it. Uh, my violin doesn't have it because I'm a big kid, but um, what you want is to have a tailpiece or ha that has um, all these little fine tuners on all the strings. So you can just use these to fine tune and you don't have to use these uh, big tuning pegs at all. Um, once you do graduate to not needing them, you always need one on the E string though. Number five, make sure that your fine tuners aren't too low because if you turn it too much underneath here, it could uh, go right into the wood and damage your instrument that way. So you always want to be very careful about that. Number six. If you have a violin outfit or if you have a used violin, uh, very likely your strings are either not a very good brand or they've gone dead. Number seven, when you do get brand new strings on your instrument, it'll usually take a few days up to a week for the strings to settle. Uh, during the fresh period, they'll go really flat and out of tune very easily as they're playing. So don't panic when this happens. It's nothing wrong with your tuning pegs. It's just the strings and all it needs is a little bit of time. Number eight. Besides the piano, pretty much every instrument needs to be tuned every single time you take it out of the case. Believe it or not, I've actually met some people who've never been to an orchestral concert or watched people set up for a concert and they had no idea and they took out their instrument like every time and thinking oh my god what's wrong with it why is it so out of tune like every single time well that's normal it happens you do need to tune every time you take your violin out of this case and sometimes we even tune in the middle of concerts if it's a very long concert as well number nine uh, what many beginners overlook is the chin rest and the shoulder rest uh, they're so busy with contorting their bodies to the instrument that they don't think about how they can change the instrument to better fit them. Uh, if you have a short neck, you usually don't have to worry about it as much. You just 
you can usually get away with the shorter uh, chin rest that usually comes with the instrument and find whatever shoulder rest that works. But if you have a long neck like me, you generally want to be shopping around for a taller chin rest and then find a shoulder rest to match. So you don't want it, uh, your neck to having to bend so much this way because then it puts tension on the back of your neck and it can cause a lot of problems. What you want is for the chin rest to be uh, fairly close to your chin already. So you just have to squeeze a little bit and it's right there for you. Another thing that I forgot is if your shoulder rest is too high, it'll cause your whole instrument to be hi uh, too high and therefore your right arm will get all out of whack. So it's all interconnected. If you need something taller, use a taller chin rest, then look for a taller shoulder rest. Number 10. Uh, if you have a young child, I suggest don't buy a shoulder rest because likely they have a smaller size violin and therefore when they get older, you're going to have to buy another violin and then a new chin rest, I mean, new shoulder rest. So really it's just a waste of money. Instead, what you do is get a sponge to put right there and then you uh, attach it by getting an elastic like this and wrapping it around. So the elastic will be holding the sponge right here. And that, my friends, is everything you need to know when you first get your violin part two. If you haven't seen part one, a link will be here. If you want to see my last video where I'm talking, it'll be there. And if you want to see the last video where I was playing, it'll be right here. And if you like this video, do whatever other YouTuber asks you to do and click this thing.